Hey guys, so over the last uh, year, year and a half, I've been mentoring folks uh, that are pursuing the DS special agent, diplomatic security special agent career through my Patreon. Um, Patreon is a subscription service that you can, uh, you know, uh, uh, sign up for and 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 I have different levels that you can do one of the thing one of the levels I do is I, I I do mock interviews with people right for the the oral assessment piece of the the my security board of examiners oral assessment um and uh, I since I've been doing that uh, I've had a, a significant amount of questions that have come my way but some that I wanted to touch base on that are that are uh, that are really specific to the uh the the dsat uh the which is the diplomatic security special agent test and the bex which is the oral assessment piece and then the follow-on uh investigations personnel su su suitability panel um i'll give you what i know uh you know i am i am you know i don't speak on behalf of the government i'm not a ds agent anymore i've been out for a while i have contacts i have high confidence in what i'm saying uh with you know due to my my contacts in ds and I'm still very well connected with the community there uh, through you know personal uh, means and through the podcast and everything else. So, um, so I want to answer a few questions. Uh, one is, you know, what is the the biggest issue that I see with people that, that don't pass the bank? So I've worked with over 100, probably 170 or so individuals, and we have a very high rate of of of, of uh, success. But there are some that don't have uh, that don't pass. And you know, what am I seeing? What do I think are the issues? Uh, so I'll discuss that. Um, the DSAT and the uh, qualifications evaluation panel. There's been some concern in our Facebook group and the Becoming a DSS Agent Facebook group, which you should check out if you're interested, uh, about people that are you know highly qualified but not making uh, the the cut. And there's some some uh, what we call group experts in there, uh, active agents, former agents, retired agents that have input. And I thought their input was you know is 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 valuable and important and, and accurate. Um, and then the last piece is the personnel and security uh, panel that we'll uh, discuss uh, a little bit about and your your options if you don't pass it, which are slim, but they're there. Um, before I get started, uh, you know, about the Patreon, I don't have the ability uh, through uh, August. I don't have any more availability to do the mock interviews. I'm packed up just about every day. I do take some days off from it because I have a full-time job. Um, and I do this in the evenings uh, when when hopefully the kids are behaving. Um, but uh, but the Patreon is there for for you. You can get in at the five dollar level. And I literally everything I put on there is to help you on the Patreon, whether it's an audio, a video, or or, or writing, is to help you advance your uh, you know your your knowledge of DS um, and and pursue you know and successful in your pursuit of passing the BEX and becoming a DS agent. I also put a ton of free stuff out there, the YouTube channel, what you're watching this on, uh, my Instagram. I don't, I'm not as active on, but the Off the X podcast uh, as well. That's all free, so you can go listen to that as well. Uh, but the the Patreon is very specific and geared towards your success in the BEX. I put up scenarios because you're going to get scenarios at the BEX. I put up, you know, uh, tips on on interviewing and. And, and just general knowledge or, or stories that didn't make the book that'll enhance your understanding of DS that I guarantee you will help you towards your bank. So if you choose to do it, I can't do the mock interviews. I packed up through through July and I probably won't do them for August, but there is still capabilities to uh, hop on a phone call, just a basic phone call, 30 minute call, and or uh, just you know access all that material that's very specific and geared towards the banks. Again, it's $5 a month. Pretty, pretty easy. You can cancel any time. So that's your thoughts there. Um, that's my thoughts there. So about the BEX. Uh, so one of the first questions, what's the biggest, biggest issue I see, uh, you know, with people that are going to the BEX and, um, the, and not making it? Um, I, I see two things uh, mainly. One is um, what appears to be a lack of enthusiasm, almost like it's a personality trait, but not really. It's like a stoicism um, or a quietness uh, and, and what appears to be a lack of enthusiasm because I don't think they're unenthusiastic. I just think when they communicate, they're so solemn, they're so stoic, they're so quiet, they don't see they don't show much enthusiasm. And I can tell oftentimes right off the bat like this is not gonna be this is not gonna be good for you if you don't exert some enthusiasm. I'm not saying to be a cheerleader uh, and go out there and, and, and scream from the rooftops. But you need to show some passion and some emotion 
when you're you're answering these questions about your experience and your motivation and your desire to be a to become a DS special agent, DS wants someone that wants them, right? So you have to work on that if you're going to be successful. And you have to be passionate when you pursue this, and and show that you've done your research and so show that you 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 know the the sacrifices that you will make in the job and you will make sacrifices. It's busy the first several years, especially these days with protection details and living overseas in these uncomfortable environments sometimes. So, you know, showing that passion, that enthusiasm, that understanding of the job and that you still want it, I think is, is, is extremely important. The second piece is focusing on the wrong things. If you've watched any of my YouTube videos, I talk about soft skills all the time, right? And that's everything from your interpersonal skills to your critical thinking skills, et cetera. If you're going in, if you're a particularly military and law enforcement guys and not picking on you guys, I was I was both. Um, but, you know, the lingo is one thing. That's that's another thing you need to address. You need to get out of the, 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 the lingo that you're using, whether you're using reconnaissance for an area when you want to do an assessment, right? How the language you use, the lingo is something you want to change. Uh, acronyms, obviously, something you want to change. But the big thing is what you're focusing on. If you're focusing on your time in combat and your tactics, your tactical skills when you kicked in this door, or you know your uh, your, your your fitness level, or your you know tactics when you're doing protection, they're not really looking for that. It's it, it's these are all things they can teach you. Now, whether they teach you to be good at them or not, that's going to be up to you if you you, you excel at it or not. And you can certainly use those in the job, 100%. But this is a very foreign service-centric career and a very foreign service-centric interview. You want to lead with being diplomatic, with your soft skills, with your interpersonal skills, with your critical thinking skills, with your communication skills, with your ability to build relationships. That's what you want to lead with. I tell people that you're applying to be a diplomat who happens to be a federal agent. And sure, your first couple years, you are in the field office. And sure, you're going to be doing protection details. But you're going to travel overseas in those first couple years. You're going to likely encounter State Department personnel that are on the line, or I forget what they call it, but the line team with Secretary of State detail. Those are, those are, are non-law enforcement personnel. So you're going to have to use your interpersonal skills to build those relationships, to build that trust. That's what you should be focusing on when you are uh, conveying your dimensions, right? So there's 11 different dimensions. DS puts out a special agent assessment, uh, a DS specialist assessment guide. The latest one is September 2023. Look at those dimensions. And when you look at them, lead with, you know, teamwork, written communication, presentation skills, planning and organizing. But don't tell me when you plan and organize an operation in Afghanistan to kick in the door. That's not really what they want to hear. That's my suggestion. It's really up to you. But when you start talking about tactics and 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 uh, you know fitness and 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 guns and everything else, I get it. I understand it. I'm with you there. But this is a different type of interview. So really focus on the soft skills. I hope that makes sense. The DSAT and the QEP. So the diplomatic. Uh, that's my. That's the second question. So so basically, our second comment is about the diplomatic security special agent assessment test. And then the QEP, which is the Qualifications Evaluation Panel, which happens after. Again, not speaking on behalf of the government. This is my understanding of it, and I think I'm, it's pretty accurate. The DSAT is two portions. So you, you, you open up, uh, I call it the portal, but you basically set up an account. And you have to answer all of these questions that are related to, uh, you know, again, most times your, your soft skills, right? Your, your leadership skills, your management skills, your, your uh, uh, interpersonal skills, whatever that, that may be. Um, there's a number of them that you can look up that once you apply and you and, and you have to write about them. When you write about them, so that's the first piece. You open that up, and I think you have like up to a year to submit. Um, maybe six months. Might be six months. You, you have to check that out. But take your time and write in those very, very well. Don't do it, and I've said this before, like the USA Jobs, they have the KSAs, Knowledge, Skills, and Abilities, and you kind of type out real quick what it is you want to do um, or what it is you've done, and it's like a lot of brevity there. That's not this, right? Now, I'm not saying you have to fill up the, I've had people ask me, Cody, do I need to fill up all, you know, 2,000 characters or, or words or whatever it is? No, you don't. Actually, that probably annoy them if you're just putting in BS in there and not putting in like something that's really impactful. Um, but you do want to take your time on that and you want to submit these and make sure the grammar is correct and that the stories you're telling, the experiences you're sharing are very, very impactful and related to the job. 
right? So just, that's the first piece. Once you submit all of that, I do have a level on the Patreon that I can help review these and look at these and just make and guide you in the right direction. Um, I don't write these for you. Let's make that clear. You write your own. I can guide you in the right direction. I can help you out with grammar and stuff, but let's just keep that clear. Um, once you submit that, uh, then you are uh, uh, going to schedule a the, 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 the assessment test in which you will go in to a Pearson View Center, and they're all over the world. And I've, I worked with people that have done them overseas, and you're going to take the DS assessment test. Um, that's going to ask you an, an array of questions, and I quite honestly, it's still a mystery. Uh, you know, I, they tell me, you know, study basic grammar basic math, good critical thinking skills. You know, you like scenarios and you got to think in critical thinking skills is my understanding. You know, um, you, I suspect you should, you should have some knowledge, some base knowledge of, of the government and how the government works and the state department and all that. Um, and then you take that test and it's important that you finish that test. There's people that haven't finished it um, and didn't do so well in, in the overall score. That test which I, it, it wasn't like this in the past when before the DSAT before when I applied and others applied in the last you know ten years really been like this I think the last year and a half two years that test is graded and and used in your overall score so you need to do really well on that and you need to finish right that's the first part you 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 open up a portal you take your time you write your 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 uh, personal narratives and statements of interest is what they're called and then you take your Pearson view. Um, uh, test um, and then that's that now they grade these quarterly and or they look at these quarterly these the, the the passing grades and the trend has been if i recall correctly and then others that have done this have seen it is after each calendar quarter or fiscal quarter doesn't really matter so so let's say january to march you apply in april ish time frame is when they're going to look at it and they're going to say hey send me your documents Right. All right. You pass the test. Send me your documents. You don't see like your, your college trans transcripts and maybe a few other documents. If you apply in April, for example, to be April, May, June, July is when they would do it. So that's kind of like a timeline thing. If you want to if you're looking to get it in and, and speed up your process and you apply in April, your process might be a little longer. This is all uh, based on trends that I've seen in that uh, you, you submit your documents. And then they will uh, eventually get you to the, and that's for them to review at the qualifications eva evaluation panel. They're going to look at everything you wrote. They look at your score. Fine. You passed. That's good. They look at all the things you wrote to make sure, you know, everything from good grammar that, and to really quite honestly, that you gave a shit, that you took the time to write something impactful that, that meets what they're asking you there, right? That meets the standard, a good standard, like above the standard, right? They're going to meet that. You could have been the greatest Navy SEAL ever with, with, with multiple degrees and a freaking astronaut. And if you didn't follow the rules or write the way they wanted or the right the way they need or really conveyed and took the time to show that you, you care, uh, you, you're not going to get past it. So if I had people in the Facebook group that are like, look, I've done this, 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 and this. And I don't know how I didn't make it. Well, there's two things. And, and, and a lot of the people in the group said the same thing. Likely, fo third, follow instructions. So maybe you wrote on the wrong thing. You didn't write anything that was impactful. Or maybe you didn't submit the documents on time. Or maybe you submitted the wrong documents. Maybe you didn't submit them in the right format. You're going to get, you could get, I'm not saying you're going to, you could get tossed for that. Um, so keep that in mind when you're submitting these documents. Your skill set is great, but if you don't submit them properly and follow the rules and really take the time and take advantage uh, of the time they give you, the six month to write something really, really impactful, then you're likely not going to get past it, or you 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 might not get past it. So keep that in mind. That's super important. Um, after the qualifications evaluation panel, then you will get an email, and the email will say you passed the QEP. We'll be in touch with you about your back dates. And then at some time, they, and they often will say it'll be months. And then these days, it's pretty quick. The trend has been it's pretty quick. Right? They'll get it to you in a couple months, probably sooner. And they'll say, hey, you ready for the backs, this, that, and the other. Here's, uh, you know, here's dates and, and, or here's locations. Send us your location. Something like that. It's a couple emails exchanged. You'll send them locations, and then uh, they will give you some dates. In most cases, if you go to D.C., if you pay to go to D.C., you're, gonna, you, you're likely going to get a case, or from what I've seen, you're going to get a, 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 an um, assessment sooner 
right? Because they're doing them pretty much rolling in D.C. and other places they have to visit. Now, if you if you say, I want to go to Houston, they have a, a trip scheduled, then you might get lucky and, and get it, right? So just keep that in mind. So, you know, they, they'll tell you it could be six to nine months you get an, 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 an interview. Quite honestly, I've seen it very quick. You submit that email and they say, all right, you're there in a month because you're going willing to go to D.C., depending on, on how, how you, you do it, right? Or it might be three months. So it just depends. But it could move fast. After, uh, so you, you, you get your date and then, you know, you prepare and you can prepare on your own. Uh, or, you know, you can do however you want to prepare. And then you go to your oral assessment. And my understanding is they, they you do a writing sample there, uh, which is all in the DS specialist assessment guide. They talk about the writing sample. Um, and then they give you, you know, the, the three different sections of the oral assessment. So you'll do your writing sample there then you'll do your oral assessment. There's three pieces. There's the experience and motivation piece. Uh, there is the scenarios piece, and then there is the dimensions piece, right? So the dimensions that you have to study and prepare a sample, uh, an experience for. And the assessment guide has like, kind of what you need to do. And when I train with people, I go very nuanced to get into a lot of detail and, and help people convey their experience in a way that's appropriate and, and really have them focus on the appropriate things. Um, you know, and, and then again, I do scenarios. I make my uh, make up my own scenarios. Um, I've actually answered the scenario on the DS assessment guide in my Patreon. Um, just people are like, hey, Cody, how would you respond to this? And I've responded how I thought I would handle it. And I'm sure I would have been fine because I've handled these before. So um, so that's going to be your, your three sections of that. My understanding is it's it's the DSAT, the oral assessment, and the written written portion. And those three scores combined is what gets you your, your final score. Um, I don't know how they're weighted. It makes sense that they'd all be like thirds, 33%, 0.333, but I don't know. I don't know how they're rated. But you need to do well on all of them. It's a very competitive job. This is not, you know, not that, that HSI and FBI aren't, but they have a lot more slots. They have a lot more agents, right? So they can, they can, they can get them. Um, but this is a very, very competitive job. So after that, if you pass, they say, okay, we'll get you your documents. And, um, you know, congrats, con conditional offer, we'll get you your documents, and then you go through your, 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 your background and everything else. They say they'll give you several months. Usually they get it to you pretty quick. Again, the trend that I've been following with the almost 200 people I've uh, helped. Um, and so then at that point, I always encourage people to get it done as soon as you can. Get it done as soon as you can. Get your background investigation done. Get your... Um, medical done and get it all submitted and people say well how long do background checks take that's that could be a whole video in itself there's a ton of variables about uh, 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 and, and reasons why background checks might take so long it could be from the the countries you travel to the 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 the, the amount of travel you've done where you live uh you know how many employers you've had uh there's a number of things that could be involved in the background event but get it done as soon as you can because the sooner it's done then they will schedule your PRT, which is your physical readiness test, and then you'll pass that hopefully, and then you'll get placed on the register. PRT, no factor on how well you do. You just do it, all right? Um, as long as you pass, you got to pass, um, and then go from there. Again, I can answer questions on the background investigation later, but uh, in between the PRT and the background investigation, I kind of jumped ahead, is the personnel and suitability panel. Um, it is my understanding and my understanding from when I was in DS that you could pass your background check and be like, fine, this guy could probably hold a clearance and not give up classified information. This is just how I phrase it. But he kind of seems like he's not the best team player, right? You might have uh, people that um, had said negative things about you in your past jobs, or maybe you quit a bunch of jobs and you didn't show much stability. Maybe you have some financial issues that you haven't handled that you're delayed, you know, you're delayed on or you just disregarded. Maybe you've traveled to places that are a little suspect. Um, they're not required to give you a clearance. So just keep that in mind that that is a part of it. Um, you do have options. You can appeal. Um, uh, the appeals process when you, if you are, because I've had people contact me, if you are, um, uh, if you don't make it past the the, the personal suitability, you you know uh, you have options to uh, again appeal. You can use an attorney, or you can write on your own. Um, people have successfully, and have, I've seen both successful appeals and unsuccessful appeals. Um, both successful appeals were with attorneys. 
uh, but there was an unsuccessful one without an attorney. Um, I mean, with with an attorney that was un, that was unsuccessful. So just keep that in mind. Um, so that's that. That's the personnel and suitability piece. After that, you get past that, you do your POT, you get on the register, and then it just depends on your 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 level on the register. Um, you know, based on your score, and you'll go up and down. All right, people will be added to the register. You may go down. You they may be added. You may stay where you're at, and then DS will begin pulling people off to add them to FLETC classes, which I believe now are at 24 for uh, uh, 24 uh, candidates per class. Uh, there are times where it's 48, um, I, but right now I believe they're back down to 24. So that's that. Um, anyway, that's it. I took up enough of your time. I hope uh, this answered some of your questions. Um, I know this is long winded. I'll try to mark inside the, um, well, It'll be too late at this point when you when you see it. But basically, I'll mark where I talk about which time I talk about different things. Um, uh, again, I put a ton of free resources out there um, off the X podcast. Man, they're you know it's not me that's really good. I suck at editing them, and I'm not the best host. But the people that come on are really good and give a ton of great intel. So really, really good. Go check that out. It's going to really enhance your knowledge about the organization in general, and may probably motivate you. A lot of people get really motivated by those. Um, I have uh, this YouTube channel. You know, there's a Facebook group as active, former retired DS agents. They're literally answering questions, right? I know you got Reddit and all that. Most of those guys aren't going to be DS agents and I, they're not vetted. They come to our Facebook group, they're vetted. The DS agents, the ones I know at least are, are, are vetted. They're DS agents and they're the ones that are group experts at least. I, I look at them, I know them, and I put them and they're, and they're good to go to give you some good responses. Um, that's that's two. That's three free resources right there. YouTube, Off the X Podcast, and, and uh, Facebook. Of course, I have my book. Uh, that's not free, uh, but it's not expensive. And I, uh, it's audio uh, audio version. Uh, there's the uh, Kindle slash Apple iBooks version. There's the the print version. Um, ton of good reviews on that. Go check them out. Um, a lot of them said this is what helped them get past the exam because I, I kind of talk about my, my my process and it's not a, it's not so serious, right? I, I, I make a lot of myself uh, situations. But I've, you know, my ten years in, uh, I, I did a lot. So I volunteered for everything. So I had a, a good bit to, to talk about. Um, and then there's a Patreon, and that again is the, you know, five bucks if you want. You get all the access to just about everything. We do virtual happy hours with active DS agents or former DS agents. Um, uh, you know, there's networking. If you need me to connect you with someone, I, I, I do that. Um, there's all the content I put out. You know, um, for five bucks a month, cancel anytime. Um, and then you can, of course, get higher levels where there's like personal, more personalized attention and support. So um, it's uh, patreon.com all slash off the X underscore Inc. Inc. So go check it out. Anyway. All right. I'll stop talking and uh, appreciate all of you guys support uh, off the X underscore Inc. On Instagram. Uh, good intel there as well. And uh, yeah, go check it out. Best of luck. Uh, hope you all can achieve the, the, the goals that you pursue to achieve. All right. Thanks y'all out.